Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the next race vlog here from Shanghai this time and kicking off the weekend here in style uh, with a uh, Heineken event where the Champions League meets Formula One because we've got the thousandth Formula One race and it's the Champions League trophy tour here in Southeast Asia. So I'm meeting some of the greatest legends from Champions League. Boys, which team in the end? Barcelona or Real Madrid? <laughs> this, is a, this is a tough question, but I'm a supporter of Real Madrid. Real Madrid. And which, uh, which soccer player do you love watching the most at the moment? Or do you enjoy following because of uh, the skills? I love uh, to watch uh, Cristiano because he's my team my coach. Yeah. So as a, big, as a big Bayern fan, one of the Bayern legends, Xavi Alonso here. here. Good to share, we're doing an inter interview together. This is going to be a first for me to do it with a soccer star. You're going to chat in Ostoch, can problem. Ah, you're, you're no, good, no, 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 no. Did so good, did so good. But you had a good time in, yeah, in Bayern? Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah. It was great in Bayern, yeah, yeah. Great, great city and great club. I miss it. Just missed out on that Champions League title, yeah, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, I was going for that, trying to beat it. But... Trying to beat Clarence, huh, with his Yeah, uh, to get close teams. to him, but yeah, we were at semi-finals, but great memories and very good friends. Four titles, but three with different teams? Three different teams. Which one was the favorite one, then, in the end? Oh, all of them, all of them. It's like having kids, you don't, you, don't, you don't choose them, you know? So, Pierre's phone has this amazingly flashy green line on the screen. I don't know if you can see it. Right down, and so what happened there, may I ask? I got a bit, uh, a bit upset and just threw the, the phone against the wall and didn't like it. I'm gonna jump onto the stage now, just do some rehearsing, rehearsing being myself. And my, my goodness, quite a mass, massive mission that they built up here. They had to let out the whole water from the lake and they built up this huge structure, huge structure here on the water. Like the whole, the whole festival is on the water. So that's pretty impressive. I, I bet that didn't come cheap. Okay. <laughs> yeah, new George, I'm taking over the business. No. Um, yeah, just uh, China is my territory now, for whatever reason. <laughs> Taking over Nico. What did you think to the Netflix series in the end? Then? Uh, very encouraged by it. I mean, I think that you know the reaction has been terrific. Uh, I think we've uh, exposed the sport to a number of people who haven't been true fans, and you know, our ultimate grow goal is to grow the fan base. And I think I wish you were driving when we did it because you would have been fantastic in it. Yeah, yeah, go, go. Yeah, you set me up too early. <laughs> What was one of your most toughest moments when you were starting in Formula One? One of those moments where you still <laughs> you still <cringe. laughs> when, you think, when you think about it. Well, that, that was when I did the the test prior to my first race. I was in Jerez, Williams, Williams, and I was told that they were going to test different drivers to decide who would race in Barcelona. As I'm testing, we had these silly chicane barriers made out of tires. I clipped the barrier, and the first time ever in four years, I crash a Williams. As I'm crashing out of the car, Frank has just arrived and he's literally in the car up on the elevated section as you came looking and I'm like, this is not good. Go to the pits and he goes, despite the fact you've crashed my car, I'm here to tell you you'll be racing in Barcelona. I think I just collapsed on the floor because I thought I'd blown it completely. So that was the worst moment I think. What about, didn't you were shunted into the pit entry or something? Like I did. That? that cost me two and a half million. Two and, and a half million? Because my bonus at Williams was half a million for a win. And my McLaren contract, if uh, I'd won two races in 95, they were going to pay me an extra million each year on the two year contract I'd signed. And so you're in the lead? One, I was leading the race, easy pit stop, came in, down the gears, and the uh, blip, automatic blip, went high higher and longer and it pushed and by the time I realized and hit the brake I went into the pit wall that was it game over David Coulthard crashed in the pit strap it's not about the money you know but it was uh, an added frustration but at that moment it was a little bit about the money it was <laughs> yeah it was disappointing to say the least but anyway it was oh, David, um, sorry it's the launch sorry. moment after that oh, yeah. so you'll be sorry the we, have, we have to go we have oh, to go sorry catch you later <laughs>
些老一辈的这个赛车手，当时是八十年代的早期，然后到一直到后面的话，这对我来说是非常特殊。那让我觉得他当时在大就是大。三对一。My favorite memory in all of my time in Formula One was my first race win, and this happened here in Shanghai, 2012. Thank you very much. With, um, very cool news. Justin here, who is our producer, we just decided, is your title for the weekend. All right, okay. Right? Uh, Justin has managed to sort us uh, out with a podcast with Xavi Alonso. Yeah. Now I'm going to jump in some interviews. But I've got Sarah who's going to save the day again. Yeah. Yeah. We've just met the medicine man. <laughs> he's the medicine man. Traditional Chinese. He's a, he's a healer. Like, Very traditional yeah. healer. He said that you didn't sleep very well. Oh, you also have another little problem. You don't have a very well. Hey, you're right. Card don't matter, is it? True. I didn't sleep very well at all. <laughs> No, no, this is this. Absolute legend here, apparently, in Shanghai. Yeah. Can you give me a hand? Oh, yeah. Yeah, my eyes are sweating. Sweat. Okay. No, 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 and that's it for today, and tomorrow is going to be the first day of the track. It's Saturday morning here, and I think the medicine man must have cracked the wrong bones because it was an absolute horror. I am seriously in trouble out here. Fell asleep at 7 o'clock, I kid you not. <laughs> this never happened to me before. So I slept one hour before the alarm went off. Oh, and we're straight into an awesome cool thing. We've got the ES8 here. Neo, which is the big Tesla rival here in China. Um, and they're letting me use the car for the day to check that out, which is wicked. Nomi, please, quiet. Have you met Nomi, by the way? Okay. Nomi's there. That's her two eyes. And she has everything under control. She's a complete assistant for everything. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, it's, uh, Casper, yeah, we you can swap the batteries. Automatic swapping, three minutes. That is Jeez, awesome. that's amazing. Wait, so you're saying you can stop at the highway and then you you have a like along the highway and you just swap it there? Yeah, that's amazing. So you, you only have one battery and just yeah. So you never you don't have to own the battery. You you just pay a monthly fee. Some fun facts about the Neo. So it's a serial founder, William Lee, who's done it, and he's founded one company after another, and he raised like two billion dollars from scratch just to build up this car company, and he's now sold. 11,000 cars only for now, like in the first year, but it's going through the roof very successfully. We'll try the paddock here. And it's amazing. It's actually, you can actually see blue sky, which I don't think I've ever seen here in China. So they must be making some progress with their electric cars, moving the factories outside of town, also shutting down some of the coal, fac coal uh, production facilities, whatever. <laughs> About hashtag where's Ted? Oh, oh hello. Sorry. Ted is back in the house. I was here all along. Where were you? Amazing. You amazing. were here. So now we're here. We can look forward to some great behind the scenes commentary again, yeah? I've got the suntan stuff still on yes, my face. All back to you. Sorry. <laughs> Wow, so they've done a really special activation here for the thousandth race and I'm just coming up to some of the old cars as well. So they've got the Williams here from uh, 1996 or something. Sergio was great luck. 
no chance to get into Q3 so close. The hair was very really close, very difficult actually, also with the wind, changing yeah? uh, corner by corner actually. Really? Yeah? Uh, every round was very different, so. I would be pleased if I was P11 because I think it's a good strategy choice, but uh, P12 is, is not a bad one for tomorrow. But it's probably one stop, right? it has to be tomorrow, no? I think I so, yeah. So. yeah. But uh, I think you don't want to be in the qualifier to start. Yeah. So that might, might, might make it a bit harder for the Q3 runners than in, in the midfield group. Right. We'll, we'll be watching. Thanks, Thank man. you. These guys are complete nutcases. Have a look. With these goggles, oh my god, never, ever, ever would I do that. Never. So this is the uh, 50s, that's end of the 50s, this is the uh, middle of the 60s, and this is the 70s. Jackie Stewart, my fellow Heineken and Rolex ambassador, complete legend of course, so really, really nice. So actually what I did after my career, I had put myself as a mission, I want to get one helmet from every world champion and have the whole collection. I very quickly gave up, because these guys back in the day, they had one helmet for one season or maybe even for two seasons, so in their whole career they had like five helmets and therefore it's just completely rare and impossible to get. So I quickly gave, get it, gave up that. But still in the modern day I'm gonna try and get a collection going. So I've got, I've got Alonso, Vettel, not looking good actually. Need to ramp, ramp it up because I don't have that many. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. I also come to the Green Tech Festival next month. Oh, amazing. She's yeah. coming to, our, to my festival in Berlin. So cool. End of May. Greentechfestival.com. Okay, that's almost the end here of my... Well, let me just... Uh, let me just tap out here. So that's almost the end here of part one of the behind the scenes race weekend, weekend vlog. I'll do a quick summary of today, but the, the big analysis is on the separate video that uh, popped out live uh, earlier. Go check that out. Today, just Valtteri dominated, really deserved it. Uh, Lewis was phenomenal because he was so lost, but then when it matters, he always pulls one out of the bag and almost stole the pole away from Valtteri. But uh, no, good result, Valtteri got it. And tomorrow will be exciting. Uh, tune in on, on uh, Sky Sports F1 or if you're German on RTL, but that's gonna be in the next behind the scenes part two. Tune in for that, going live on Sunday night, so tomorrow night, bye bye. Remember to subscribe please if it's the first time on this channel. Subscribe down below and hit a like as well, why not, if you like this video. Bye bye.